everyone, welcome to the LTM podcast powered by Slipstream Autosports. We're your hosts, Daniel and Alex, and welcome to our Tasmanian review. Uh, the last weekend, uh, last sprint weekend of 2024. Uh, Alex, how are you, mate? Uh, what do you think of the weekend? Uh, action packed, drama packed, pretty good. No complaints. That's it. And, uh, well, before we get underway properly, um, first off, I uh, just want to give a quick tribute to uh, Campbell Little, who unfortunately passed away this morning after a four-year-long battle of cancer, age 65. Uh, he was an icon of the sport. Um, he always looked grumpy, but he was always friendly, at the, uh, though. Um, <laughs> so never j- judge a book by its cover, but uh, he'll be dearly missed for sure. Uh, so could we uh, all our condolences to Campbell's family and friends, of course. Um, with that being said, though, this welcome to our podcast. If you're new here and you're watching this as a playback, um, this is a live stream originally, so feel free to follow our social media to stay up, da- up to date uh, when we do lives and stuff. There will also be timestamps and chapters so you can skip to your favourite part. But Alex, let's get straight into it. Um, you know the drill normally, we run through the team standings and we work our way down there. So let's start off with uh, Red Bull, who still lead in the Constructors standings. We've got 26 people on TikTok, I just want to point that out. Uh, you're all legends. I hope you're all having a great, great night. Uh, Red Bull currently lead with 3,732 points. Uh, Brock Feeney got a third and a 15th, and a Will Brown got seventh and second. Now, they, um, you know, they're back to form in terms of pace. Uh, of course, we saw Feeney got pole position, but uh, it wasn't a clean race for them on the Sunday, though. <laughs> well, it was just... Uh... Until five laps to go. That's it. Until someone called Thomas Randall shunted them, sh- punted them off. Um, but uh, we will get into that yeah. when we talk about him. But um, yeah, huge, huge um, effect in the championship standings anyway for Brock at least. He's now 189, 181 points away from um, Will Brown, who of course is still the championship leader. But um, the one that... Um, you know, is getting in their way now is Walken Shaw and Dreddy United, who've moved back up to P2 in the constructors, uh, with chat uh, with 2,914 points. Uh, Chazzy got a second and a fourth, and Ryan Wood got an 11th and an eighth. Now, good weekend for them. Um, they were very quick. Um, what do you think, Alex? Yeah, not too bad. Obviously, the incident with Randall and Feeney promoted them up basically. Um, even though, yeah, they did have better pace um, over the weekend as a whole. So, look, I think Walkinshaw, obviously, with Chaz Moss at the Fighting French Championship, legitimately, um, is always going to be up there. It's just whether or not they can stay in that position based on Ryan Wood's positioning and results. Um, so far, it's going well. But, yeah, they're very similar points to... Um, Tickford, they're only 17 points apart, so um, yeah, any swings there, either way can change that order and obviously with the Endurance coming up oh boy it's about to get uh, a bit hectic, and both teams well, Tickford actually haven't even announced their drivers yet. No, that's good they're the only team that hasn't done so yet of course, James Moffat most likely uh, will be with um, Cam, but in terms of Tom, it mm-hmm. It hasn't been announced. Uh, we did say it could be Lockie Dalton. Um, we mentioned that last well, week. Well, let's just say that if it is those two, I think you have advantage Walkinshaw because I think they have the best co-drivers probably available, mm-hmm. barring the ones that uh, AAA have. I think they've uh, stacked up on co-drivers with Coulthard and Holdsworth. Well, absolutely. Um, yeah, so I I think Walkinshaw will hold on to P2 for the rest of the year, pending, obviously, those results. But, you know, there's tracks that Tickford are very dominant at. Um, Gold Coast, Adelaide come to mind. Um, and even Sandown. Hmm. You know, despite some issues that they've had over the couple, couple of years. Um, yeah, we should be in for a pretty... Pretty good battle for P2 and the Constructors. 
Well, uh, first off, shout out to Jared Crab. Apparently my uh, mic wasn't picking up any audio for me on YouTube. So I'll fix that now so hopefully you can hear me. But, um, yeah, right. yeah, walking sure. Um, Ryan Wood, of course, first off, he has now got an extension till the end of 27. Uh, well deserved. Beautiful. He's really proven himself this year. Uh, and like you said, um, they've had a good weekend. I was actually surprised how well the Mustang was going to go this weekend. I was worried that, you know, it's Camaro track, it's a GM track. Um, but, and Friday proved that as well. But then Saturday happened and Stanaway was P1 in practice. And then all of a sudden it was Mustang territory, which is good to see. It was quite balanced actually okay. this weekend in a way. But, uh, yeah, like you said, with the Enduros though, of course, Lee Holdsworth and Chaz have won Bathurst together. So obviously they're a fantastic pairing. Fabian Coulthard is a great steerer as well. And with Ryan Wood, uh, two fantastic Kiwis. So I am very excited to see how they go for sure. Uh, in terms of Tickford, um, they're currently third at the moment with 2,897 points. Uh, Cam Waters uh, got a fourth and a, vict- and a win. And Thomas Randall, a 12th and an 18th. What could have been for Thomas Randall? Of course, he got pole position on the Sunday. Unfortunately, though, it uh, sort of went downhill from that point onwards. Yeah, unfortunately, Randall's had a couple po- uh, pole positions this year and just haven't led to anything good after that. Um yeah, I think that just comes with experience, to be honest, mm. of, you know, being up the front and, uh, you know, taking opportunities when they arrive, and unfortunately he hasn't quite done that so far. Um, but, yeah, look, I think his time's coming. You know, even, like, it, well, this stems all the way back from a couple of years ago as well, like when he stalled at Tail and Bend and got clattered from Heimgardner. Yeah. Like... Uh, every time he's been on pole, it's ended in disaster. So maybe he should qualify second. I reckon that's a better option. Yeah, there you go. Because, like you said, he lost it from the very beginning. Uh, and then it just went downhill from there. He uh, got in a few tangles with Will Brown. Um, gee, that race was exciting, by the way. Um, this whole weekend and as a whole has actually been rather exciting. Um, Tasmania, is, Tasmania always produces uh, good entertainment. It. Uh, yeah, it might have been really cold, <laughs> but I think it's going to be moved to a warmer time zone um, next year. I uh, just want to give a few shout outs to here because we have uh, neglected the chat a little bit. Uh, first off, uh, Bryce, uh, great weekend of racing indeed. Caleb, how do you go, mate? Um, better than New Zealand's Wi Fi, yeah, of course. And Supermax uh, Supercars is cooking. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. It's great to see. Um, but. Uh, should we uh, have a quick chat over the Mark Dutton, Thomas Randall drama? Because uh, we did cover no. that on the YouTube. No, you can't come past my line. No, oh, sorry. Okay. No, we, we, we can't... can't chat. You, you've crossed my invisible line. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we can talk about um, it. Yeah, of course, we've covered it on YouTube already. Um, you can check that out if you want. But it's currently being inv- investigated by Tickford, or Tickford have requested an investigation for it. Uh, so a little bit of context. In that race, Will Brown and... It started off with Will Brown and Thomas Randall going, like, they're bumping constantly, uh, racing hard. It was fantastic to see. It was a lot of, lot of fun. Um, but unfortunately, uh, you know, Will went down the inside of the final corner. There was a little switchback uh, and uh, pushed him wide there. Um, tit for tat, really. There was racing incident, uh, is what it is. But then a few laps later... Uh, Thomas Randall uh, went into the back of Brock Feeney and spun him around, got him a 15-second penalty. But at the end of the race, this is where the drama happens, he went to go apologise to the Triple Eight uh, to Brock. So he went to the Triple Eight garage and, as Alex mentioned before, Mark Dutton um, acted like a child and uh, said, no, you can't go there. And he pushed him. He, he, I, I said he, he was a gentle tap on the radio show, but... After looking back at it, it was a bit more than that, I reckon. The uh, nudge. As a nudge. Was a, that's it, how I describe it. It's, it's probably the best way to describe it, too. Um, nudge. Yeah. So do you reckon anything will come out of that investigation? No. If anything, supercars are just laughing their heads off. Um, look, they got, they got enough problems with uh, their own doings. Mm. But... Um, 
yeah, look, it's not really going to trouble them too much, I feel. Like Bryce was saying, uh, Barry Ryan would have done the exact same thing. I think it actually would have been worse. <laughs> he, he, in a way, he did, um, he did actually do the same thing. Well, Erebus have come into this a little bit because didn't Betty back up yes. Dutton or something? No, she. Um, I think she compared... Um, I, I don't know the whole thing. She compared Barry and with Dutto with the whole incident. Um, how Barry yeah. got copped a lot of hate or something. I don't know. Yeah, but he genuinely said like "f off" and actually said explicit language, whereas Dutto was just you know with his little hands waving, yeah. you know, get away. Um, yeah, I don't think any, I don't think supercars are going to really care about this to be honest. Well, it's but. Good. Um, like I suggested, Tom, if there's any other incidences that unfortunately you get involved in, just go around the back. Mm. They can't stop you from going around the back. Exactly. Absolutely. So right. just, just go don't worry about it. Tick for Garrett or or go to the paddock. Just, just make sure Dotto's not there and talk to Jamie. Jamie was very lovely about it. Actually, in he had no that, problems. Before Mark came along, J- Jamie was actually, you know, going to, you know, was. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it. Brock's back in the truck. Yeah. Yeah, he was. Um, and if Dutto didn't make it awkward, he probably would have kept talking to him. Exactly. And, uh, well, the thing is, though, he did touch him. Uh, there is part of the rules where... That's probably what... That's the that's yeah. what the, is being investigated. So the punishment yeah. for Barry Ryan was he got reprimanded. Um, probably that could happen to Mark Dunn. I don't know. Because uh, the rule states any fi- like no physical contact on the driver... My intentional co- physical contact is allowed. Um, that you know, so I don't know. It depends on how um, they decide that one. But I have a question as well. Mm. Maybe they should not allow drivers to go into other team garages. Maybe I don't know. Like, is there a rule? I don't, I don't know. Obviously, it's more of a kind of unwritten kind of rule. I don't think there is one at the moment. You know. I don't think there is one, and I don't think there needs to be one because Supercars is quite a friendly paddock. Um, mm. um, but you know, I suppose you know each each team would have their kind of own own rules, and well, Bryce here who can it. come in or not. Um, Bryce says, if you mean it, I mean, if you look at it from the Dado perspective, who knows what they had on the computer screens? That's a good point. There's a lot of data maybe there, but all, his also, his excuse as well was he didn't know what Tom was going to do because obviously he had the helmet on, uh, emotions were high, which in my opinion was just a lame excuse, but, uh, like his, he, he looked like no threat whatsoever talking to Jamie before Dado arrived. So I don't know, but. It'll be no, interesting. It's not to like see he did a Michael is. Schumacher. It's not like he did a Michael Schumacher and pushed people out of the way to get to the garage. Like and that's with the helmet off. He literally <laughs> just went there by himself. Yeah, exactly. What a moment that was. Um. <laughs> yeah, true. And Bryce has just said it's interesting. Does that mean any driver could walk anywhere at any time? That's the point I'm trying to make up. Like, is there any rule? Like, yes, you do see other drivers going there to apologize and whatnot and um, have a discussion. So, uh. I'm assuming there isn't any rules. And it's kind of, you know, if you're welcomed here or not. <laughs> um, but, like I said, I'm pretty sure this would happen. These these things don't happen every day, so they won't really care. Yeah, no, exactly. And, uh, well, we have seen, like, for example, many, many years ago, Will Davison came into the HRT garage to confront James Courtney um, a long time ago, too. So, yeah, it, it's like a... And like a, I guess you could say an invisible rule. I just wanted to call yeah, un, unwritten. Yeah, <laughs> invis- yeah, sure. <laughs> With Dado. It's more unwritten rules, and there's a yeah, lot of exactly. unwritten rules in sport. You know, and like, um, yeah, just more, more, kind of like more. Sp- yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, well, let's uh, first off, Liam. How you going, mate? Welcome. Um, hope you're doing well, buddy. But, uh, next we move to DJR. Um, oh, by the way, in terms of that as well, um, Tickford wise, um, you know, that could have been handled a bit differently, by the way, too. Like, Mark had every right to not let Tom in the garage, but, you know, 
make like pushing him out the, or nudging him out the way isn't the way to go in my opinion but uh yeah it is what it is but we'll find out what happens we'll cover it when we find out more uh liam this is about supercars um so the Tas- tasmanian super sprint uh, next up, DJR um, in f- fourth position with 2,539 points. Anton finished 13th and 14th, and Will 15th and 11th. Uh, I wasn't expecting them to have a fantastic weekend, uh, given how I thought you know the Camaros were going to be dominant. Um, mm. So yeah, yeah. I'm not overly shocked by that. Um I don't tend to have the I'm not s- either, especially especially after um qualifying where Will Davison was last. Mm. Um that was a bit of a shock. Um but yeah, I guess we'll see. They did overtake Penright over the weekend, who had a unfortunately a worse weekend. And we'll get to that in a bit. But that was weird of them. DJR I, DJR are just they're just there at the moment. Mm. There's no really way. They're there. No really if <laughs> two of yeah, they're just there. They're always, you know, hovering, hovering in the top ten. Um, like where they finish this weekend? Well, they're just not consistent enough. Um, and Thomas thirteenth, and uh, Will was fifteenth in race one, and then race two, Will was eleventh, and and Thomas fourteenth. So yeah, yeah, top fifteen finishes is all they've got. Um, but yeah. It's um them and Penrite are a bit weird, but except that you know Matt Payne's won a few races at the moment, so um yeah, we'll see how we go with that. But um I reckon that you know there's going to be some tracks like Shell always do well around Bathurst, so don't count them out for no. the next couple rounds. Absolutely. But yeah, DJR of yeah, not much like. Bryce has said nothing's been said about them. So, yeah. It's going to be interesting, for sure. Um, and as you know, as we keep saying, who will be in that seat next year, We now we officially don't know. Um, with Kai moving to the next team, which we'll talk about now, Penrite. Uh, mm-hmm. yep. Now fifth, like you said, they dropped down one uh, with 2,518 points. Uh, Matt Payne, 17th and 21st, and Richie finished 16th and 17th. What a weird and disappointing weekend from them, um, given how well they've been going for the last couple of rounds, all year even, actually. Yeah. It was an odd weekend. Um, like we said for Will, it started out in qualifying for Matt. Mm. Just, yeah, it was in the back row, so. Well, you got spun, I think. Yeah, don't know. Race. He did, and he still finished uh, 17, so it wasn't all that bad. Um, but the pace... So he must have good race pace. The pace generally there wasn't there compared to what we have seen, though, especially with Richie, who impressed me in um, the practice um, and early quali. Um, it just wasn't anywhere in race, unfortunately. Yeah. I'd, yeah, kind of like the DJR that just weren't much talk about them this weekend and yeah they both finished 16th 17th on saturday and on sunday they finished 17th and 21st so yeah not much to say unfortunately about either these two teams um yeah it was a bit of an odd weekend for uh both of them so yeah an odd one but i'm sure they'll bounce back for sandown oh yeah definitely like I think, I can't remember how they went last year um, from memory at Sandown, but I'm looking forward to nonetheless. One, this is the team I'm excited to talk about, though. Uh, P6, Matt Stone Racing. Uh, you said in the radio, the team of the year, pretty much, uh, with 2,434 points, with Nick Perkat finishing first and seventh, and Cam Hill sixth and twelfth. What a weekend for them. I did say that they are the team of the year. When I was saying that, it was more about um, improvement. They're the yeah. most improved team of the year, um, which I think is well deserved. Um, I think obviously they've won as many races as Tickford have, who are a very big team. 
Um, they've won more than DJR have. Um, Grove, I'm pretty sure they've won more than them too. So, yeah, no, no reason why um, they shouldn't be in that conversation. Even Cam Hill has improved. Um, Bryce has said what I was about to say, that Nick Perkett is cooking at the moment. Uh, he sits, where does he sit in the championship? He sits uh, do, 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 sixth. Um, which is unbelievable, you know, to think that a year and a half ago he was going to be uh, pretty much leave the whole category. Um, he's done very well. So, now credit to the team. Um, yeah, hundred percent they are. I think they're they're my they're my team of the year. Mm-hmm. And real quick, I'll just reply to Shane. Oh no, Bryce has done it for me. Yeah, we spoke about the Dado thing before, unfortunately. Um, and but we, yeah, we continue back to a, Matt Stone. We also made a video on it as well. If you want to check it out, Shane, uh, separate. Yeah, video. true. You can check it out now if you want. Um, but yeah, I think Matt Stone have done an incredible job. They've, I don't know what it is about um, Nick Perka and going back to a old, uh, you know, Kamara you know, GM team, but he always does well when he's in a GM card. I don't know what it is, but he suits the Kamara very well. And yeah, yeah start, having won two. Yeah, I guess it's just more comfortable, and obviously in this like little home environment kind of team, um, he's loving life. Um, yeah, I'm so happy for him. He just looks happy, and I love it. Uh, we <coughs> he said, does. We he said, does. We, we actually said the exact same thing in Melbourne uh, when the Melbourne round happened when he won. Uh, we were like, it was mm. fantastic. So, but that car though, they've they've been very strong at some circuits this year, um, and normally we'll talk about it as well later on. Premier. Normally, when Matt Stone Racing does well, Premier does as well. Although this time around, they didn't do a good job, unfortunately. Uh, although Tim Slade did all right. Um, but, you know, fantastic to see two wins for Matt Stone Racing. Obviously, one up from last year. Cam Hill did pretty good, considering... Uh, well, actually, they both did. Nick Perkett started dead last uh-huh. on the Sunday, finished seventh. And Cam Hill, I think it was the Sunday that he uh, he uh, had an incident where he... Ran, he I don't know if he got touched or not from memory, but he uh, went off the circuit. Um, he still finished 12th. To finish, yeah, that's what I mean. To finish 12th, that's, that's fantastic. Um, and there was a lot of action in that. Yeah, 100%. Itself, but um, no, it's fantastic. Yeah, I think um, I think they are, uh, yeah, massively improved. Obviously, not sure how they'll go in the Enduros, but that's more based off the co-drivers that they've got mm. versus, yeah them being who they are so well, i'm excited for i think co-drivers. yeah that'd be that'd be interesting i reckon who's with them again so cam hill has aaron cameron the two oh cameron crick sorry um is with cam hill the two camerons i can't remember from memory who's with nick off the top of my head uh it was there it's just gone but i'll find it if you can find it, that'll be fantastic. I feel bad for forgetting. Um, but yeah, what a yeah, what a turnaround, Bryce, from a win to qualifying last year. <laughs> hey, that's the that's that made the, no sense. Hey, I, well, I, in fairness, I guess it's a part of the. See, I didn't watch qualifying this weekend, unfortunately. Um, I was just out both days, but maybe the qualifying system had an effect with that. Um. O'Keefe, O'Keefe, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Dylan O'Keefe, yeah, 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 that's right, yeah, thank, thanks, Bryce, for that, appreciate it, um, yeah, no, that'll be good, um, Ooh. Well. sorry, I just, I'm going through the co-drivers, and Warren Luff is with David Reynolds, yeah, I like this, I like that's that, a, that's, the, that's a good, uh, it's a good pairing, mm. um, Anyway, continue. Yep. Sorry. Ne- next up <laughs> is P7. Um, Erebus, they've moved up one spot. Um, they've swapped with Team 18, as we mentioned with Dave Reynolds on that. Uh, they've got 2,200 points. Brody Kostecki, a 5th and a 23rd. This is funny. All right, A 5th and a 23rd. And Jack LeBrock, 23rd and a 5th. They've literally swapped <laughs> each day. It was fantastic. <laughs> Um, but great. It's it. They actually had some pace, um, this weekend. Um, especially Brody. Finally, um, it was. It's been weird to see Brody not up there. Um, so it's good to see him there. But although Sunday though, 
Oh boy. Um, I wonder if he's finished serving his penalties <laughs> or not. Um, what a what a weekend for him, man. Gee whiz. Well, Some say he had to drive back to Victoria. Exactly. Um, so a little context. He fir- it all went to crap when he spun uh, David Reynolds out. Uh, pit lane penalty for that. Then he went into the pits. Oh. Got a 15 second penalty for crashing into Mark Winterbottom due to an unsafe release. And then. He took out both Team 18 cars within a minute. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then a 15 second penalty for. Uh, sorry. And then another pit lane for uh, speeding. So, wow. <laughs> but yeah. Lucky the pit lane's not long. <laughs> exactly. But neither is the track, though, too. Um, yeah. True. Good to point. knock out both of the team 18 cars within one or two laps <laughs> was just. Wow. That's just unfortunate for them. Um, but. I'm sorry, but can I just say something? I, it really bothers me when, when teams get an unsafe release in the pit lane as someone is about to come into the box. Like, it's just the easiest thing in my mind to do, a part of a, a pit crew. Yeah. you got to wait for a gap. How hard is that? Mm. But then you also you let him out into the car that's about to come in front of you, right behind you. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't blame Brody for that, the incident in pit lane. I blame the, the, the person who's the car controller. Well, yeah, you can't blame the driver. The driver can't see anything past his No. Head. No, exactly. <laughs> so, so, like, it's how... How this happens still in motorsport after hundreds of years of um, experiences yeah. and footage and all that stuff, how it still happens, I have no idea. Yeah, who knows? But uh, shout out to Crispy for like, following I, I, us too, by the way. Appreciate it. I get little, you know, nicks and, you know, pulling out right, like, you know, in Jack LeBrock in High Heimgardner contacted in uh, Sydney. I yeah. get that. But when you just pull out a car right in front of someone else, it's just brain dead. It's, it's so just silly. It really bothers me. It bothers me. And you take out... Yeah, literally. Just yeah. blame Barry Rose. Bryce is too right. Just blame... <laughs> <laughs> it just bothers me, man. Like, there's my rant. I always have one rant each weekend. Um, it's, this is my rant. Actually, because it just shouldn't... Yeah. <laughs> we should have a segment. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> you know, it just... You take out Frosty... For yeah, oh, it's just so dumb. <laughs> it's just so dumb. I don't like it. It's just but and once again, they're unfortunately neck and neck in the championship. So they're always gonna be with each other the whole year in the yeah. pit lane. <laughs> yeah. By the way, question. Do you like the live pit lane now that it's ha- you know, halfway through the year? I gotta say I do. Um it's yeah, me too. It up a bit. It actually I do. I like it as well. Like just the fact that Erebus, you know, They've had a bad year, so they've gone from leading to literally to the bottom of the pit lane. Yeah. Uh, it's really created. Yeah. Actually, yeah, no, I quite like it. I think we dissed it at the beginning. Um, well, I, didn't I didn't really mind the idea, but, yeah, it was, um, yeah, no, you did. Um, it was, uh, yeah, different, but I'm, I'm, I, I enjoy it. I like, like, yeah, after the eight rounds, like, it's actually pretty good. Um, and, yeah, yeah agreed. and. You know, it also helps remind us the team standings at the same time, too. Um, let's move on to someone, a weekend to forget. Team 18 in 8th with 2,188 points. Mark Winterbottom, 18th and a 9th. And David Reynolds, a 9th and a 22. Um, now, unfortunate for Dave, he did get spun out, like we said, with Brody. But... Um, he also got a penalty for crossing the line um, too early or something like that, as well as Matt Payne or Brody Kostecki, one of the two. I can't remember who was behind um, David Reynolds, um, but they both... What line? The pit exit line, I think. I think they... Um, I don't know the... I, I can't remember exactly which line. Um, didn't know there was a pit exit line. Well, they got a penalty for crossing something. Uh, Bryce, are you, are you able to help okay. us? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> but... It, they got a penalty for that, but that basically ruined David's day sure. even more. And of course, Frosty actually, to be fair, finishing ninth after getting whacked in the wheel. 
Um, yeah, I, I was shocked when I saw that. I know it's like very little speed, but you know, it don't it doesn't take much to break. The impact was pretty big, that's man. What I mean. But I mean, the impact yeah. was that would have broken a wheel and fallen on. Oh yeah. Um, he oh, still went up fourteen positions. The pit line where the timing clock is. Yeah, okay. That's just weird. But just go with it. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, no, the, it recovered well. Recovered, and of course, Mark. I forgot we got to mention Frosty got spun at the exact same spot a day earlier by Andre Heimgartner, who had some beef with yeah. him back in Quali. Um, I, th- I think apparently. Um. Like I, like I said, we didn't. I didn't watch Crowley because we were at the track. God, camera should have been in that garage. Yeah. <laughs> um. So that was funny. But uh, let's move on to P nine Premier Racing, Newlon Racing with two thousand one hundred and fifty nine points. James Golding, bit of a very disappointing uh, weekend from him. A fourteenth and a thirteenth, and Tim Slade eighth and tenth. You don't normally see Tim uh, finishing ahead of. Um, James, it's a uh, a nice little change, I guess. Very good point. But yes, I did, Tim's not too bad, man. I, I don't know diss Tim, but uh, yeah, it seems like he he might get replaced by Brody potentially, but we'll see. It is going to be interesting. But that, where were they this weekend? Honestly, um, like even on the TV, they just weren't. Anyway, it was like how he described DJR and. Penright, they yeah, exactly. were just there. Yeah, that's a very good, um, good point. Um, I guess the only reason Penright were on camera is because they got spun. Um, but Premier stayed out of trouble and just didn't have pace, unfortunately. Now we yeah. move on. This is the finally the first time this has happened. P10 and P11 were going to merge in because they're both the BGR squads. Um, normally the Blanchard Racing is split the two, but now they're together. Uh, also doesn't. Oh, that's make, sad. <laughs> it also doesn't make a difference with the pit order now. Um, mm, yeah, true. So there you go. But uh, start off with Andre Heimgartner and uh, Bryce Forward squad. They've got two thousand one hundred and forty points. Andre with a twenty-two and a sixth, and uh, Bryce a ten and a third. Um, the Stephen Bradbury moment. Uh, <laughs> for, for Bryce Forward, he's it turns out to actually be his second. Career podium and his first for BJR. Um, I learned because I think on the radio I thought it was his first one altogether, but no, he's actually got two now. But I was not expecting that go. to happen. I'm not too sure. No, um, I don't think many people were, but here we are. Yeah, but even then, it's good though. It's he good. was sitting in a really good position before, like before that happened too. Um, yeah, and, he was fifth. Yeah, so he he had a really good weekend. In terms of pace, Andre of course got twenty second because um, he got the, he got a penalty for spinning. I think Andre uh, Mark around, um, so mm-hmm. that's, that's you know explains that. But uh, nah, overall good to see BJR back up in the front, pointy end again. Um, uh, Bryce is just Bryce is the best. He's just answered what we were discussing on the radio on Thursday, oh, there um, we go. Tuesday. Yeah. Because I was convinced it wasn't um, Bryce's first podium. And then you said, oh, but in the uh, middies colours. But now it's just occurred to me he's raced the middies colours for like his whole career. Yeah, he's raced at Super 2. And, and he raced that still at WAU. Yeah. So there you go. But it's his first for BJR, so I was half right. You were, yeah, you were right about that. Yeah. So Yeah, no, I, I see, I can't remember back from last, like, I can't even remember from two weeks ago, so there you go. Um, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I was going to remember that, but, um, my name isn't Aaron Noons. Um, but, uh, you know, what a good weekend for them. Happy for them. Um, the other side of the garage, however, not so happy. Um, even worse than their normal standards. Um, with 1,517 points, uh, Jackson Evans, 24th and a DNF <laughs> and McCauley Jones, a 19th and a 16th. Um, well, first off, it started off with a Saturday where they bullied, um, it's, it's you lot, you're losing now, are you? Um, do you need a minute? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was great. That was a good one. <laughs> well, technically, yeah, the, the only worst position is DNF. 
So I must admit, though, Macaulay Jones is not in the 20th position, so no, he's, he's done something 16th. right. 16th. And 19th, there you go. 16th is more than 17. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, but, oh, yeah, it... The way you delivered that was just loads. <laughs> well, uh, it was an unfortunate <laughs> weekend for Jackson um, with Aaron Love. Yeah. Um, of course, that, that was weird. That big that crash... That was a big crash too, by the way, too. Um, and he tried to drive the thing back. He almost, he looked like he was going to give it a crack again. No, they asked him. Oh, they okay. asked him. Oh, and then, and then the camera. Yeah. Can you bring it back? And then they saw the re, yeah, the, the camera showed the wheels not even on the car. <laughs> that was, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, beautifully. But yeah, no, that was a strange instant. Aaron, I don't know. I think it was Aaron's fault for not giving him enough room, but it's such an awkward part of the, track because it's curvy anyway heading into turn one um it, it is it's a bit tricky um this rem it reminds me of um lightning mcqueen where it says you gotta go right to go left exactly. because you do you have to turn right to go left well you're not wrong there that's literally so there you go. going on there no. um yeah i just as you were saying that i'm like that was um that's a good point uh bang on yeah okay, maybe that's what aaron love was thinking uh, maybe go right <laughs> to go straight. I don't know, but J yeah, Jackson Evans. I think Second he was just a bystander there. Well, I think is is the first is the top biggest one altogether. Is that James Courtney crash from Gold Coast, Bryce? From memory, is that the oh, biggest? James Courtney crash. Remember, he crashed smack bang into the wall at Quali, a top ten shootout. On the Sunday, I think. Yeah, well, I was there, so I don't I mean, remember so. that at all. I th I just remember. Yeah. I don't remember what day that was. I gotta Google that again. Um, I think that's the biggest one, but uh, yeah, no, yeah, right. Um, uh, well, we haven't seen so too many big shunts in in Gen three anyway. Um, no, which, which is good, I suppose. Bryce says he would say, "Oh, okay, yeah, Cooper's in Darwin when he um got in." That was weird. That was weird. Um, that's a good point. Yeah, I would. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, was that Newcastle? I swore he crashed in Gold Coast. Too. When you when you when you search up James Courtney crashed on YouTube, the first thing that comes up was when he got hit by the oh, the, yeah, the, the building the thing. Oh, he's he's no the when the, when the helicopter broke his ribs. Yeah. Sorry, I've just realised he's been in too many dramas. <laughs> well, he's had a long career. Exactly. Or the Philip Island one was really bad. Yeah, that, that was, was bad. Yeah, it, that was bad. Um, twenty fourteen looked like to be the year that he actually. Didn't have any injuries, but then he came back that 2015 anyway to win Gold Coast. I think with, with uh, Jack. So, mm. um, yeah, that was a unfortunate incident. Back to back to today. Um, it was unfortunate for BJR for Jackson Evans. Macaulay Jones stayed where he is pretty much. Um, not much happened there. And P12. Uh, last but not least is Blanchard Racing. Uh, unfortunately, they've now dropped back down. They had a terrible weekend, unfortunately for them, uh, with 1,503 points. Uh, James Courtney, 21 and a 19, and Aaron got 20th on the both days. Um, yeah, we sort of already spoken about them already. Um, bit of a disappointing weekend for them. And then Aaron Love just was in the wars all weekend. Um, he was spinning like a helicopter in Quali, um, almost reversed into a car. Skinner, how you going, mate? Upper Brock Feeney. Love it. Love it, mate. Um, yeah, just a bit disappointing from Blanchard overall. But I'm curious to see how uh, they go at Sandown. Of course, this is Aaron Love's second time in the Gen 3 at Sandown in the Blanchard car. Of course, he did that wild card last year, so it's going to be very interesting to see how he does this year. Um, but yep. Alex, do you want to run through, if you do have it, if you want to want, run through the championship standings? Yeah, I was also just trying to find some crashes over the last two years, and there's not been many. Um, Alrighty. Will Brown um, is still leading the championship, as we said before. However, the gap between him and Chaz Mostert now is only 81 points. So, yeah. almost Catch nothing, I would say. Is getting closer. Um, meanwhile, the gap to Brock Feeney now is 198 um, to Brown. So that, that's got bigger. 
Um, also, the Waters is now fourth um, or 350 behind Will Brown. And then Matt Payne, who was the last of the, probably the contenders now, not anymore, uh, is fifth. Nick Perkett, six, sixth. Um, seventh is Will Davison. Randall, eighth. Golding, ninth. Deep Pasquale, tenth. Um, yeah, Bryce, we'll talk about that. Um, because it's actually a good question. Um, because I watched Supercars Talk make a comment about that, about the qualifying system. Um, uh-huh. with a free part for a, it's such a long quality for a short race. Um, and you actually said something. Well, I, we, we, I yeah, said that. Yeah. Um, I was looking at the schedule. I'm like, hang on a sec. Does this race not go? Does this qualifying session not go longer than the race? Yeah, it almost does, doesn't it? <laughs> and well, fifty five laps around a fifty laps fifty lap circuit. Yeah. Without safety cars, it's not that long. Um. Also, Matt Walker. Um. Tell you what, you would think so. Uh, given how he performed this weekend. Um. He has had a rough start um, to his supercar main game career. He certainly has. But it is a tricky thing. It's a tricky one. Because um, I quite like Aaron. He, I, I liked him when he was in Super 2. Um, but maybe, yeah, maybe he could have done another year in Super 2. Um, but yeah, he's de- plus that car also hasn't been perfect either. Um, so it might be a combination of things. But, yeah, no, you might. I, I Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if Alex, you want to make a comment on that at all about Aaron Love, but I don't know. I was, it was, yeah, he hasn't really performed this year, so not, not as yeah. well as we'll that's all I've really got to say. Yeah, yeah that's a fair point. Um, but yeah, with the quality system, um, do you think they should have just done two ten-minute split sessions and then combine them, like you said? I think that's what. You well. Said. The problem I found with with that is obviously with the questionable weather conditions, you'd have potentially half the grid with an advantage over the rest. So that I don't think you could allow. And that's why they didn't do it. I don't mind the qualifying system because it works elsewhere. It was just unfortunate the race wasn't that long. And yeah. Unless they did a way it where just they, looks a bit awkward. Unless they did one quality session and then do like a progressive grid for the next race or something. Uh, that I don't know. Um, like similar to grassroots mm. stuff. I don't see. I don't know. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not in. I'm glad I'm not responsible for doing that. Yeah, I suppose. But like, but not even like the weather conditions would have made a big difference. It could have even just be a cloud. You know, a cloud brings a couple of degrees cooler temperatures than direct sunlight. And there you go. There's. I just knew that if they kept it the way like that we were suggesting, that there'd be a lot of people questioning the fairness of it all. And like, yeah, we get that weather's weather. And I agree with Bryce. But, you know, there'd be a lot of, you know, complaints. It, so it's, that it's was a, that was my only question about it. Yeah, no, fair point. Um, but uh, well, that's it for now, Alex. Now we uh, our eyes yeah. are focused on the enduro season, uh, which is oh, going good. to be major because, of course, so many points are on offer, and so much can happen in these two races. Um, who knows? Maybe Chaz and Holdsworth could win Bathurst and. Take the lead from Will Brown. Uh, it's going to be very interesting for sure. But uh, any uh, final thoughts, Alex, before we wrap up tonight's pod? No, nah, I'm just so excited for the rest of the championship because this Mostert Brown battle is up for grabs, and it's really cool. <laughs> it's really exciting, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's it's really cool, really cool. Uh, regardless, we're going to have a brand new champion, so um, mm. that's what makes me excited too but uh that is it in terms of supercars for us um of course now we wait a little while until uh sandown um but of course we've got formula one coming up this weekend the dutch grand prix we'll be doing a live watch along hopefully um if all goes well 
Uh, and then, of course, our review. And also stay tuned for more content from us on YouTube and Spotify with our LTM show. Uh, we've got IndyCar and NASCAR coming up as well. Uh, and also next weekend is round four of the High Tech All Super Series, which is part of the, uh, which also has the Formula RX-8 series, which you and I will both be there at the bend that weekend. So that's going to be really cool. So if you want to go there and hang out with us, um, head to the High Tech All Super Series website and grab your tickets there now. It's fantastic. You're going to love it. Uh, I can't wait. It's going to be sick. But uh, thanks everyone who has tuned in, whether you're watching as a playback or a live uh, YouTube, I might have to re-upload this due to the audio um, missing at the start, but it is on TikTok, so I will have to do some editing trickery, but that's okay. Um, yep. But that's all right. All part of the fun. Uh, but yeah, you can follow us on our socials. They're on the screen, as you can see there, or it's in the description as well. Um, and uh, Alex, thanks again for joining me, joining me for another chit-chat of motorsport. And shout out to all the no legends over on the streams. But, uh, yeah, that's all from us, everyone. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.